Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. We're going to do this one a little back asswards from normal. First, we are going to install Anaconda using Miniconda. Then we are going to run a quick demo and show how to use Conda in a Visual Studio Code environment. Then we'll go over how Anaconda works. Finally, we will compare it to some alternatives. In the video, I will refer to Anaconda as Conda. Let's go. Let's go over to the Anaconda documentation. Then we'll go over to the should I use Anaconda distribution or Miniconda. The Anaconda distribution is for x86 machines. It comes with most of the Conda packages pre-installed. For ARM machines like the Jetsons, we need to install Miniconda. Miniconda installs about 70 base packages. You can install other Conda packages with the Conda install command. Here's the link for the archive of Miniconda versions. We scroll down a bit. We're looking for Linux Arch 64 64-bit. Click the link and it downloads. Go over to the terminal, wander over to the downloads directory. Then we can compare the checksum using SHA-256-SUM. This one should match the one on the website. It appears to, so we're good to go. Now we're going to scroll down to the quick command line install. This one isn't quite right. It looks like it downloads the x86 version. All we really need to do is to make the directory miniconda3 and then run the shell script we just downloaded. As an alternative, you can follow the command shown here after modifying the file path. I just copied these commands into a text file. Let's list that. I made sure to download the correct architecture, copy it, and run it. I'm on a Jetson Nano. The install takes about a minute. Switch over to the Miniconda directory. And now we initialize the Conda environment. The biggest change it makes is in the hidden file bash RC. Let's take a look at that. You can see that it manipulates some of the file paths. We'll go over that in more detail later in the video. Now we reopen our terminal. If you're familiar with Python virtual environments, you'll recognize that we are in the virtual environment base. It's prefixed on the command line prompt. Let's start up Python, and you can see that we are using version 3.12.7. Exit out of this. I can see all the installed packages by executing conda list. There's about 70 of them altogether. The base Python version on conda is 3.12. One of the nice features of conda is that we can create virtual environments with different versions of Python. We'll create a virtual environment named Kanga using Python 3.10. Here it starts gathering up the version of Python and the required packages it will need. Proceed. Yes, please. And we're ready to go. Activate the Conda environment Kanga. When we start up Python, we can see that we are on version 3.10. I'll wander over to the demo directory. Here I have my spectacular Hello World script. Let's run the script. Oh, it's beautiful. Visual Studio Code integrates virtual environments seamlessly. Let's modify the demo script. We import sys and then print out the version of Python that's running. Save the file. Then we click the Run button. We see that it runs the default system Python 3.6. In the lower right-hand corner, we can select which version of Python and virtual environment to use. The default system is currently selected. Let's select the Kanga virtual environment, Python 3.10. Now when we run the script, we see that we are running Python 3.10 in the Kanga environment. The ENVS subdirectory of Miniconda holds all of the different virtual environments that you create. Let's take a look at the key component of how virtual environments work. Sys.path is a list of directories that the interpreter searches for modules when it encounters an import statement. This is essentially Python's module search path where Python looks to locate modules. By default, sys.path includes the directory containing the current script, the standard library directories for the installed Python version, and any directories specified in the Python path environment variable. When we look at the system Python version 3.6, the base Conda environment and the Kanga environment that we created, the paths are quite different. I'll clean them up and we can look at them more closely. 
For the system default Python, in this case on a Jetson Nano, you can see that the Python search path is oriented towards slash user slash lib and slash user slash local slash lib. For all Python search paths, the directory which contains the script is searched first. The system path first entry points to conda bin, which contains the conda executable. That makes conda available from the command line. You will see certain paths frequently. On Ubuntu, a path dist dash packages indicates modules that are installed by apt. Site dash packages indicates modules that are installed by pip. When we look at the Python search path in the Kanga environment we created, everything points to the Miniconda and its environments directory. This is how it isolates each version of Python from other parts of the system. Each environment has its own copy of the assigned Python interpreter and modules. This isolates each environment from the others. The system path is also modified to look first in the Miniconda and environment directories. The system path is modified when the environment is activated and restored when it is deactivated. The base environment looks directly in the Miniconda lib directory. As an example of isolation of environments, we'll install NumPy in the Kanga virtual environment. One thing to be aware of is that this is installing from the Conda repositories, which may be different than the pip repository install. We run Python, import NumPy, and then we'll print out the NumPy version. Now let's jump over to base, run Python, and try to import NumPy, and there is no such module. That's one of the juggling acts that you'll have to do when you use virtual environments. Each environment is a separate install. Pip can also install into a Conda installation. Again, be aware that Pip may install a different version than Conda. Conda uses a separate file tree to isolate environments. If we look at the Miniconda install directory, we can see that it stores not only the base Conda environment, but also the different virtual environments that users create. By manipulating the Python and system search paths, along with each environment having its own version of Python, Conda can isolate itself from the rest of the system. Here's the Kanga environment in the EMVS subdirectory. This structure makes it easy to create snapshots of environments. With Conda, you can create a simple list of the installed modules or a binary compressed file of the installation. This is a good time to talk about the major difference between Conda and PIP. Both are Python package managers. PIP handles strictly Python packaging. On the other hand, Conda can package Python and supporting C, C++ dynamic libraries. This allows for much better performance for compute-intensive applications. However, it's not a miracle cure. Some dynamic libraries may rely on certain kernel drivers or operating system calls. There can be issues depending on the differences between the native system and the libraries in the package. And yes, CUDA is considered a driver which is tied to a certain operating system version. So even if you have the correct version of Python and so on, you may still encounter problems getting libraries like newer versions of YOLO to work without considerable effort. When it comes to Python environments, Conda and VM are two of the most popular tools you will encounter. Each has its strengths, but Conda goes beyond what VM can do, making it incredibly useful for a wide range of projects, especially those involving non-Python dependencies. Let's start with VM. It helps isolate Python packages so you don't end up with conflicts between different projects. It does this well, but it's focused purely on Python libraries. There is no support out of the box for multiple Python versions. This is where Conda stands out. Conda doesn't just manage Python packages. It manages everything your project might need, including C or C++ libraries. This makes Conda a great choice if you're working with scientific computing or machine learning projects. Note, however, that this is not as complete of an isolated solution as a Docker container, as Conda depends on the underlying operating system. Docker, as you recall, uses its own version of the OS. Check out Mamba and ArchConda, which are projects in the Anaconda ecosystem. They might offer even better performance or flexibility based on the needs of your project. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you have not already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.